Welcome back, Santa Clarita Valley. We're here on your City of Santa Clarita Spotlight Show where we talk about all things uh, Santa Clarita, and we put City Hall under a microscope. In the studio with me graciously giving their time is Phil and Donna from the uh, Arts... Uh, what, what is the, the overarching uh, Well, we're the Arts and Events Office, and okay. we're part of the Community Services Division. It's yes. very confusing, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, we're Arts and Events. So. It's not too Orwellian. Yeah, we're yeah good it's here. not too bad. It's, um, but you guys basically produce a lot of the events and, and are in very involved in some of the projects that we see going on around here and how um, how do you work with the Arts Commission and, and how is that what is that relationship like because I think uh, people might have heard some stuff in the stories recently about the Arts Commission we've been covering that a little bit as far as um, then they're looking at some projects for the city and I'm just kind of wondering what that dynamic is for somebody who may not know okay um, so the Arts Commission was formed in December of 2009 by the City Council after the um, City Council looked at it and staff provided some information um, they they took a vote and then created the Arts Commission. It's only the third commission that the city has created. There's a planning commission, which is actually required by state law, um, and then there's the Parks, Recreation, and Community Services Commission. So the Arts Commission was formed um, basically because there was a belief, I, I, I'm putting words in the council's mouth here, but it, through the discussions there was a belief that arts and culture needed to get a little more emphasis in our valley and, and the city needed to play a role in that. So th they started the Arts Commission and it's been a wonderful experience. Um, our office, the Arts and Events Office, is the staff support to the commission, so we provide you know, the agenda reports and that sort of thing and guide the processes. And a few things have really grown since the, the formation of the commission. Um, one of the, the ones that I think you're referring to is the public art program. Right. While there were public art projects before the Arts Commission, that it's really accelerated quite a bit since in the last four years. And uh, we've actually, during those four years, there's been 11 projects that have come to fruition where they've been installed and, and, and um, dedicated and all that. And then we have about six that are in the works in various stages. Um, and uh, the other night, uh, if people were uh, have read the headlines, uh, <laughs> that, that the council um, asked for three of the public art projects that the commission had approved at their October meeting to come before them to have a discussion. And the result of that discussion at the council level was a request to have the council and commission sit down for a study session with staff, obviously, to talk through public art and the process. and 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 basically what I got, and it was just me sitting in the audience hearing, was that, that they wanted, a, the council wanted an opportunity to um, really talk through what the expectations were of the public art program. As it's grown so much, I think that there's a, it's, it's a good time to kind of stop for a moment and, and make sure that everybody's on the same page and that, that everybody is, is, is heading towards the same goal with public art. It's, it's a tricky thing, as you know, because art is so subjective and um, uh, you know, one somebody might love a piece that someone else hates, so it's always a tricky thing. Uh, and not only that, but uh, we were just talking before we came on about how it's a great thing that art is really under a microscope and everything uh, is really a community involved here, and particularly the arts because you have such a strong community of artists here and just how much people care about that. So it, uh, you get a lot of feedback um, in those types of projects when you look for it. Right, which is great. and, and, and our belief and, and it, as staff and I, I know the commission believes that, that we want to put stuff out there that, that the community likes. You're not going to get 100% ever, um, but you, you want to try to um, involve the community in the process and actually the existing process, um, we, we have these things called ad hoc committees for each project and the idea of that is it's representative of the community. So it's not the, the commission actually doing the selection process it's it's a, a cross representation. So a local artist is usually on the ad hoc. Usually there's a community member. Usually there's a city staff person, but not an arts and events staff person. Oh, interesting. For example, if it's a part of a capital improvement project, the the project manager doing that capital improvement project, who may have no background in art at all, sits on the selection committee to kind of be a voice for the know, resident, the, the if you will, re resident or the layman or whatever. Um, and then obviously we have a commissioner on each of the ad hoc arts commissioner on each one. And then we try to bring in an arts administrator from another community to kind of bring their wisdom and experience. Since we're relatively new to the public art game, that's been a little challenging because of the commitment of time and travel, but we, we do try to include that. So I, I personally, speaking for myself, I think it's a really exciting and great time for the arts. And the fact that the council is having conversations about art and, and wanting to sit down with the Arts Commission and talk through 
where we're heading is a, is a great thing. It's really showing how much the arts have, have done exactly what the council wanted to do, which is to raise its game in our community. What are some of looking back at some of those projects since 2009, which is when the Arts Commission was, was first formed, uh, where was where do you see um, some of the examples of that around the town? I, I saw I was looking on the website and there's a guided tour so people can just check it out and, yeah, and look around if they want yeah, to. Yeah, if you go to uh, santa-clarita.com/arts, um, you can see both uh, the public art pieces that are out there, including the self-guided tour and also our art exhibits. But um, some of the highlights are at Canyon Country Park. There's one called Friends, which are two s uh, statues of a little girl and a dog. Um, there's uh, uh, five trash cans that were beautifully painted by five different those artists are kind at the of activity really well center. Done, yeah. yeah, it's an interesting medium. Some artists actually had a little bit of a objection to the fact that we were asking for artists to paint trash cans, but oh it's really? a great <laughs> way to get art out there and beautify well things. So. And to point, draw attention to, hey, throw your trash away. Right, right. You know, so I think it has a double, uh, double advantage there and, and, and a great purpose. Um, what do you have a favorite piece? Well, are you allowed to? I, <laughs> I honestly am excited about the next piece. It's actually in, but you're not going to uh, – it's, it's going to be uh, dedicated as part of the McBean Regional Transit Center, which is an expansion project at the corner, basically, of McBean and uh, Valencia. Oh, okay. And it's where the bus is transfer. Right across um, there was where the toppers is going to go. Right. <laughs> well, it's, no, it's further down. It's um, oh, okay. uh, behind the gas station at the corner there next to the Hyatt, kind of. Okay, so and there was an okay. existing transfer station, but we uh, the city was expanding. It was a capital improvement project, and right. we added art uh, into it. And it's a, a, um, a piece called Archways, and it's one of our first kind of non-representational. It's a series of loops, and it's uh, really cool. And it's done by an artist uh, make named Mark Greaves, who actually has done work at Burning Man. So it's oh kind of uh, yeah, it's inter it's okay, a kind of a new a step for us. Um, but it's a really great piece, and I'm excited for the community to see it and, and to hear their reactions. And once again, I'm sure there's some that won't love it. <laughs> well, I'm, I, we want to talk a little bit more about that. We have to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back on your hometown station, KHTS AM 1220.